Lord. And the, the things that he has promised and every promise that he has made is true and we are looking forward to the time of his appearing. And as we see that day approaching, that hour coming, it makes us want to check up, take inventory of ourselves and just see where we are standing. I just was hearing, I had to come in the yard out there, my good friend there, that a, a real buddy of mine is near death with cancer. And I certainly want the church to pray for Brother Rogers. And he is, um, I want to go down this week to see him. He lives in a city about 35, 40 miles below here, Milltown, Indiana. And uh, I want to go down and see him. He's a veteran of the First World War, and he had surgery just recently. And the doctors just sewed him up because they said there's no need of trying to operate. He was dying. And uh, he just learned about it, I believe, a Friday or Saturday one, that he just learned that he had cancer. But one great thing happened. He said in the room, when he went into the, the hospital, that there was a rainbow came in the corner, and he stood and looked at it for some time. And that was... God's sign of a covenant, of course, the rainbow is always represents a covenant. God keeps his covenants. He makes his promise. And you and I can make one and have to break it because we, we just don't know what tomorrow holds. But God cannot make one and break it because he knows what tomorrow holds. He, he knows all about our troubles and what is, and he knowed all that would be before it was. Before the foundation of the world, he knew just exactly who would be and who would not be. And isn't it a comfort after we just had these great stern talks from this Russian Khrushchev and, and the different ones and the remarks that they have made that says the the hangers is ready. They could destroy the world within just a minute. And just anything, they, they could just press a button and that would be all of it. But to look in the pages of this Bible and see that before that can ever happen, the church has gone home. <laughs> oh, what a feeling. See, what a relief to know. That will never touch us. That's right. We'll, it will never touch us. We are just as safely as it can be. And to know that that isn't just some hiding place that the government has formed for us. It's a hiding place that God has formed for us. And we can rest assured that it's just as perfect as it can be. Down through the ages, God has made promises. And through these promises, He's always kept them. And as for myself, I, I don't see nothing left but the just quick catching away of the church. I see the little groups going around struggling, the faithful holding on. And last week, you know what taking place in Israel, the last sign. Uh, Israel became a nation uh, in 1947. On the same night, the angel of the Lord visited me. When he came to me at 12 o'clock, it was noon when they signed the, that peace pact with the world and the League of Nations and so forth overseas. But last week they got their own currency. They are they got a regular Jewish money that they use now. And I I don't see nothing at all left according to Scripture. Of course there may many things maybe the Lord's not let me know. But I don't see nothing left but just the coming of the law. And oh, how I just like to check up. And you get to reading the papers and listening to newscasts and makes you real nervous and then sit down and think before it can all happen, we're gone home. I'll be never an old person in that country. Just think we old people will be changed then. Amen. And we'll be young. There can never be a sickness there, never be death. There can never be a sorrow, heartache, or anything at that time when we've crossed that. Just like to ask this. 
What if this morning someone could step in the door and say, Well, I've just found something scientifically proven the truth. And that is that there's a ship coming by here through the air just in a few minutes. And every one of you that wants to get on can get on. And it goes to a land I've just returned. Now, I was an old man, 90 years old. And there he is in the very prime of youth, you know, and said, just across there. Just as soon as you step off on that other side, immediately you return back young. And I met people who have been there for millions of years. And they just look the same. I say, brother, just make me some room. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> I think that's the way we all feel. And, you know, that isn't just a story. That's the truth. Amen. And the old ship of Zion's going to come down through the air one of these days and load up with saints and cross over. And just go beneath the banner of the cross and then we're home. Oh, that great time. So I think today, and even there's many afflictions of the righteous, but... God delivereth him out of them all. And I'm glad that we rest assured in this great promise. And I'm very grateful to God, to his grace that called Brother Junior Jackson as we know him here. I heard strangers testify a few minutes ago from coming in for the healing service tonight. And I'm, I'm very grateful that God saved Brother Jackson. The devil come pretty near killing him one time. But God had a work for him to do, so he spared his life. And that's why this uh, congregation and little church stands here today is for the grace of God. Junie has been a very dear friend of mine, loyal as he could be to the cause. And I pray that God will bless you people, the congregation here and. And will multiply you till this church won't be able to hold the people. And it does me good to get into a little church like this where we can just get close together. I have had the privilege, by the grace of God, to speak to congregations, which is larger. But I don't say this that I, that I enjoyed it anymore. Because the best meetings I've ever had is when we had even little house meetings. Where we just, I get me a chair and get in the corner and jump off and on the chair. And I just have a wonderful time of fellowship where the saints can get together. And wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. Amen. That's the promise. No matter the size of the church, God promised to meet with us. And he'll do that. Now, I believe the Brother Jackson was telling me that they were anticipating tonight of having a healing service at the church. And I told him I'd also come down and maybe speak a few minutes to the congregation after his Sunday school lesson this morning and kindly find the feeling of the people. And I heard someone testify they'd come for healing, and I suppose there'd be many tonight. Uh, to be prayed for. Was you anticipating a service to be just bring the people up and anoint them, pray for them, or a, a, a discernment of the Holy Spirit to find the thing that's wrong? And See, those things I have to prepare for. Not eating, waiting on the Lord, so forth, because Satan's always near. I have a trap set just at any time to upset you. How many would feel that it would be best to see the, the congregation where this church is like ours up there, a sovereign church? We feel that the majority of the people would have more say-so than just one person. See, because that's what they call casting on. Would you think it would be nice to have a just a, a discernment service tonight? Raise up your hand if you feel that that would be the thing to do. All right. Let's see. Now the contrary would it be just... All right, we will be giving out uh, the ca prayer cards then tonight and calling the people who may be, if there is a, a lots of them, I'll send Gene or Billy or one of them down this afternoon about 
What time do you start your service? 7.30. 6.30 then. And they'll give you the cards and we'll pray for everybody that's got a, the cards. That means everybody be able to be prayed for, but we'll, in a little congregation, but what we'll do, we'll let it rotate in line. Let, I'll tell them to give the prayer cards to the strangers and then let the home people come next because it will be the home people close, you see, so they'll, uh, they understand. Uh, sometimes at home, here it's kind of hard to have a discerning meeting. Miss Wood's sitting close now. I went down to the church and I would have a service of, uh, I'd say now, and we may do it that way tonight. Before there was any prayer cards or anything given out, the Holy Spirit would be near and call out certain people. And I'd say, everybody here is a stranger. Stand up. Okay. Let them all stand up and say, all right, this is so-and-so from whatever the Holy Spirit would say and do that. And then the next time I turn around and lots of people here in our city would say, well, we didn't know those people. We didn't know what was the matter with them. That might have been wrong. Next time, say, all right, we'll just take the folks at home. Let them stand up. Why, he knowed them people. Sure, he know. <laughs> so you see, Satan has got a trap set everywhere. See, he's, he's ready at any time. And so um, some of them say, well, if you just have that straight discernment like that, the rest of the people don't get a chance to get in a prayer line. Some of them say, well, if you have the, I'd rather be prayed for it. Well, it's just vice versa. So we have first one way and then another. And they, they'll be like that until Jesus comes. You can, the gospel always brings a mixed multitude. The effects of the preaching of Christ always brings a mixed multitude. It brings believers, make believers, and unbelievers. <laughs> That's the congregation that you have. So we expect all of that. So we are looking forward to for tonight being a great time in the Lord. Now, just before we open the word, and you allow about eleven thirty, I suppose, Brother Junior. And then, um, then people who want to be in the prayer line tonight so they can line them up. If there comes a group for the outside, then we can bring them in, you know, through the doors and so forth. You come at 630. Let us bow our heads now before we read the word. Our precious Lord, we thank thee most humbly from the depths of our heart. For this living hope that we have within this dying body. There is a Lord God and Jesus Christ. And to His mercy and His goodness, He has given to us eternal life. And that great hope is in us today and we feel it as a, a, a well bubbling up in our souls giving us the assurance that all God's words are true. And so glad to know today that we do not have to just guess about it. It is no more a guess. It is a no-so. For we have read His promise and see Him come and fulfill that promise to the Word. Therefore, we know that it is true. And we're grateful for the Holy Ghost, who is the witness of His resurrection. And we're grateful for ministers, true prophets of God, who stand for truth and for righteousness. And we pray that you will bless those people today, wherever they may be in their pulpits over the world that the Holy Spirit will move upon them in power and give them thy word and may it bring forth great results everywhere. For we believe that the coming of Jesus is at hand. We would ask that you would bless this little church today 
its pastor and deacons and all the board and the members and the strangers that's gathered in our gates. We are grateful for fellowship, hearing someone say they had drove many miles to come for the service. And truly the scripture is made manifest when it said, If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We know, Lord, that thy church is not in the majority this morning. The true believers are in the minority. But someday, Lord, you will take that minority to yourself. That's the hour that we long for. That's the day we're waiting to dawn when we shall see Him who was wounded for our transgressions and was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace upon Him and with His stripes we were healed. How we thank Thee for this Praying, Lord, that you will bless your unworthy servant as I try to minister to your people. Give them something that would bring all of us closer to thee. May we leave from this building this morning a better Christian than we was when we come in. And may, if there be one here who isn't right, Lord, May they leave the building this morning with a happy heart, rejoicing because they have found that pearl of great price that overweighed all the rest of the things of their life. We'd ask also, Lord, for those who are sick and afflicted. May they not have to wait for a special service tonight, but may the great Holy Spirit touch that person this morning. Give unto them thy grace. Privilege looking up on a woman a few days ago who met us and said, Oh, Brother Branham, it seems that a dreadful disease that you curse one time in the name of the Lord is trying to return again, but I'm resting solemnly up on the thus saith the Lord. And when the physicians had examined our sister Bruce, they found her negative. We are grateful, Lord, that you keep your word. Your promise is so true. May it be a thus saith the Lord this morning for every need that we have need of. We would remember those who are in the hospital and at home, and especially our brother Rogers. May thy grace and mercy, if it so pleases thee, Lord, speak this morning in a vision and show us just what to tell our brother. For we are your people waiting to hear your word. Until we hear, we'll be trusting every moment. Pour out thy blessings upon all. Bless the reading of the word and we'll give thee all the praise and all the glory for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I wish you all to turn to the 21st chapter of St. Matthew's, if you will. And we're going to read a portion of the word. <laughs> Beginning with the first verse. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, there came the Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives. Then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go ye unto the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. 
Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, setting upon a ass and a coal the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and set him upon thereupon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the ways, and others cut down branches from the trees and strode them in the way. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Naz of Galilee. I want to read or take for a subject this morning them last three words of the tenth verse. Who is this? And may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. It must have been about, say, about 10 o'clock on Friday morning. And the people had been up since daylight, moving around in the city. It was so filled at the time to the, they were sleeping outside the city walls, on the ground, in their tents, anywhere they could find a place to lay down because this special occasion had drawn people from all over the known world. It was called the Feast of the Passover which had been ordained of God to the Jews way in the early ages of their history. It was where the sacrificial lamb was to be killed and the atonement made for the sins of the people. And this being annually every year had taken place, but this time was a Special occasion. There was something a little different going to be about this one. You know, and usually where we have services, we have our regular service and our do our worship and pay our tithings and gather in our churches and fellowship with our people, but you know when Jesus comes, it's always something special. Amen. Amen. There's just something we can tell. There was great expectations. The air seemed to be charged with something. That would almost parallel the time now. The air is charged today with the expectations of His second coming. There are many in the city then that know nothing about it, just as there is in the world today. And they were many, if they heard, they would care little about it. And that's the way it is in the world today because other things are more fascinating than the, the men and women of the world than the eternal destination of their soul. 
But there were some who believed on him. They were expecting Him to come and knowing that something special would be there. Something was going to take place. For Jesus cannot come at any time unless something special does take place. There's always something new when He appears. And... They were charged with expectations, but the bad thing about all this, there was many who didn't see him, never did get to see him when he come. And that's one of the sad things about today. There'll be many who won't see him when he comes. But there'll be a remnant. Amen. There will be those who know God and who are waiting and who are charged. They'll see Him. For He'll come as a thief in the night. We'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, secret going away of the church. Oh, I tell you, knowing all this beforehand by the word of the Lord, we should Pray and study every hour of our life. Making ready for that great event. Uh, While the air is charged with His presence. And while we are believing and the anointed ministers of the gospel are sending out the thunderbolts of warning. We should be prepared for any minute for that blessed event. When we shall see all that has died in Christ through the ages. When we will see Jesus coming to get His church. Then we'll be caught up to meet Him in the air. There were many who didn't see Him that day. And while they were waiting, I suppose, since the break of day. The little congregations gathered from place to place through the city. And they were discussing, saying, I wonder if he will be here at the Passover. I can hear a truthful old minister get up and say, yes, congregation. We can look for him because he is the Lamb. Someone inspired by the Holy Spirit who knew God. God and knew His Scriptures and knew the fulfilling of His Word was at hand. He'll be here without a shadow of doubt for He is the Passover Lamb. Then you can imagine when this congregation gathered with the little congregation by the gate and after a while they said He might come through this gate or He might come through that gate. But it didn't make any difference what gate he come through. There's going to see him anyhow because it was a promise. Whether he comes today in a cloud or on a horse, it makes no difference to me how he comes. We'll see him anyhow for it's a promise God gave. And they were waiting with anticipation. The ceremonies were getting ready to start at the temple. The water was already pouring from the rock. Where the congregation was coming into worship. The priest had on their long garments and their, uh, their, all their ceremonial garb. Each congregation had gathered in its fitted place. The Pharisees in their corner and the Sadducees in their corner. If that isn't a picture of today, I don't know it. The Methodists in one corner, the Baptists in another corner, the Presbyterians in another corner. But somewhere scattered among them in little groups is the church of the living God. Not paying attention to ceremonies, but waiting for His appearing. Waiting for that blessed moment. While the rest of them is just interested in the ceremony, the feast of the tabernacles and the religious rituals. 
But the Spirit of God has charged our hearts that we know He's coming soon. Amen. And as they were waiting, all of a sudden, from the top of the hill, come a little congregation moving down. Amen. One sitting on a little white mule, coming slowly towards the gate. The people begin to scream, breaking the other branches off the trees and throwing their garments in the road hard. Hosanna to him that cometh Amen. in the name of the Lord. Amen. And as the little mule moved forward, fulfilling the scriptures of the prophet said, Oh, daughter of Zion. See what it was? It was a church, the elect. Your Lord cometh to you, yeah. meek and lowly, yeah. setting upon a little mule riding. And today, while the church is waiting, one of these days coming down from the skies, he'll come riding on a yeah. white horse. You notice that white's always represented? The little white mule he came as a foreshadow. Of coming riding on the charger with his vesture dipped in blood. A name on him called the Word of God. That's his coming now. The little groups have gathered watching, waiting for that appearing. And what a rejoicing it will be when we go forward breaking off the branches, screaming, Hosanna to him that cometh in the name of the Lord. It is gives such a stir. Among the people, the Methodists and the Baptists of that day, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the different ones until they said, who is this coming? What's all this disturbance about? We see nothing so alarmed about it. There's just the man. And he's riding on a little mule. There's nothing to be alarmed about. Why all the fuss and the carrying on? Who is it? Just before the coming of the Lord Jesus, He sent the Holy Ghost to the church in this last day. And the Holy Ghost has been a witness of His resurrection. And has proved that He lives. And He is coming. And the Amen. church getting itself ready. Amen. And as we see the church making itself ready, Amen. abstaining from fornications, abstaining from idolatry, abstaining from lasciviousness, and all the works of the flesh, we see the church and the peoples see the little congregations getting together and stopping their drinking, stopping their lying, stopping their tattling. Stopping everything that's of the flesh. Making themselves ready. Screaming to the top of their voices. And clapping their hands. And shouting the victory. The people's crowd. Who is this? They don't understand. They didn't understand then. He come meek and lowly. Came riding on a mule. And He come today to the poor and the afflicted where the rest of them say there's no such a thing as healing. There's no such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's all a bunch of nonsense. There's nothing to it. But just the same He come proving His resurrection. Every sign that He did on earth, He's doing it right now in the form of the Holy Ghost. There's an expectation amongst the people. They're waiting for that great event of His soon approach. We know it won't be long until we shall see Him who we've loved. And we believe that it won't be too long now until all things that was prophesied in the Scriptures will be fulfilled. Now, in that congregation in that day, There was a divided opinion. Some of them cried, 
Who is it? What's causing all this racket? Why is that bunch of Galileans, holy rollers, screaming and carrying on like that? I can see one good old disciple walk up and say, Don't you know, brethren, that's the prophet of Galilee. That's Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. That was spoken of by the Scriptures. Don't you know the Scripture says he shall come riding up on the foal of an ass and he will come into his people. Amen. And that's the reason that they are carrying on the way they are. Amen. We have been in the meetings of this man. We have seen him raise the dead. We've seen him open the eyes of the blind. We have seen him stand there and look out over his congregation and why reason ye in your heart? Amen. We have seen him do great signs and we know that's the Messiah. They were mixed multitude. Some said, well, it might be that he could be such a thing. Now, isn't that just the way they feel today? Amen. What's all this about? Is there such a thing as the Holy Spirit? What makes those people act the way they do? Why, it's a foretaste of glory divine. Amen. It's a power. It's the Holy Spirit that's here on earth representing Christ. Just a shadow of His coming. All these things as prophesied would take place just before he come again. Amen. And we know it. That's why we're excited about it. Amen. That's why we're enthused about it. Makes any difference what the other people say. That doesn't matter a bit. The people say today, who is that? Them day they said, we don't know who he is. Jesus of Nazareth. Well, we'll go over and look up into the Decalogues and we'll find if he belonged to this denomination. We'll find out whether he was either Pharisee or Sadducee or Herodian or whatever he might be. We'll look up and they could find no record of his schooling, of any degree that he had. And then they come back again. Who is he? He doesn't belong to any of our traditions. He isn't connected with any of our, he isn't affiliated with any of our affiliations. He has no degrees. We have no record of him going to school. He never was uh, in a seminary. He isn't neither claimed on the, on the, pre, uh, on these books or them books. We don't see him anywhere. Who is he? His own credentials was the works that God gave him to do. He said, if I do not the works of God, then don't believe me. They had their own way of believing by a man's credentials, by the denomination he belonged to, just as it is today. He's known by his denominational credentials. But a man of God, the Holy Spirit that's among the people, gets on to people, gets on to the minister, gets on to the congregation. It identifies what it is, not by denomination, but by the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, foreshadowing His coming. Oh, what an hour that we live in. Palms and hands, clothing on the back. Ready to show in the way, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. What come in the name of the Lord? The Holy Spirit. When he comes, he'll show you things to come. He will not speak of himself, but he'll speak of me, said Jesus. And the Holy Spirit comes to do its work in the name of the Lord Jesus. All the way from the pulpit to the baptismal pool to the healing service to everywhere else. In the name of Jesus Christ. Watching for the coming of the Lord. Preparing a church as a forerunner as John the Baptist. Forerun the first coming 
The Holy Spirit is in the church forerunning, getting a church ready for the second coming. And the world cries out, who is this? Where did they come from? What credentials have they? What schools do they come from? You don't find them on the record. It's in glory where they come from. And heaven's where their records are. For their kingdom is not of this world, but it's of the world that is to come. Their desire is not of this world, it's of the world that is to come. Their fashions, their desires, that's the reason the dressing and the acting and the habits of the people of the world is so contrary. You'll usually do. You, you'll usually do like the spirit that's in you. It motivates your life. It makes you what you are. Is the life that's in you. And when men and women claim to be Christians and still want to be like the world, there's something wrong somewhere. For we are not of this world. For our spirit, if we were Germans, we'd like Germany. If we were Finland, we'd do as they do in Finland. If they're Americans, they have the American spirit. If we're Christians, we have a heavenly spirit. And our spirits come from above that directs our lives and our thoughts. That's godly, brotherly love. Clean life. Honorable. Respected peoples. Now, in there they said, some was for him. Some was against him. Now, there is people today who firmly is against everything that's called God. No religion. And they're mostly in the majority in our country. World over there, far in the majority. Millions and millions that's never heard the name of Jesus Christ. They are in the majority. Then there are those who are professors of religion. And they love to put on their ceremonies. They love to be dignitaries. They like to dress and to go to the church and to have some uh, kind of a hymns and a, a little message of some sort. Talk of a God that was and then place him so far back in history that he can't move. That he was something it was. They want to claim that Jesus is right. He was a good fellow. He was a great man. He was like Washington. Never told a lie. Or like Napoleon. That's their attitude. About Jesus. They think that he was just a good man. Many of them today don't claim him to be divine. They just claimed that he was a good man. That his teaching was right. Some of them believe him just to be a prophet. But there is those who go beyond that boundary. I believe him to be God. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he wasn't just a prophet. That he wasn't just a man. That he wasn't just a teacher or a good man. He was the divine Jehovah God living in a body of flesh. You'd ask me who is this? That's what my opinion of him is. He's God manifested in the flesh to take away the sins of the world. Who is this? Not just a man. Not just a prophet. But the Emmanuel. God with us. Then not only with us, but in us. Through us. God in the midst of us. Then if that is true, a supernatural God cannot change His nature to fit people's nature. People have to change their nature to fit God's supernatural plans. That's why people cry, who is this? It's God in the midst of His people. They don't understand it. 
God will never come to your level. You'll have to come to His. God will not come to your requirement. You have to come to God's. And then when that requirement is met upon a promise that God made to redeem the people, if that requirement has met, your entire being changes. Amen. Your thinking changes. Your habits change. Everything about you changes. Amen. Your desires change. Amen. Your living changes. Yes. Your habits change. You change. Everything about you changes. Amen. Because there's a new life in you. Amen. That's what makes the people today say, who is this? Is this that fellow used to uh, work over here? Is this that? Who is this? Where did he go to school at? What credentials does he pack, says the preachers? Where, who is this woman? Is that the woman I used to see out there on the street? Yes. What's the matter with her? Something happened. Amen. And this is the woman used to wear shorts. But something happened. Isn't this the man that used to smoke cigars? But something happened. Amen. Isn't this the man that used to drink? But something happened. Amen. Isn't this the man and woman used to curse and go to the nightclubs? But they don't do it no more. Who is this? Amen. It's the Holy Spirit, the person of God living in them. Amen. I'll go down to their churches to find out what's the matter. Like the Pharisees did. They said, we'll go down to the gate. We'll find out what they say. We'll see who this guy is on this little white mule riding down the hill. Amen. And when they got to the gates, these people really had a time. Amen. They screamed and they hollered. They shouted and they praised the Lord. And it was so contrary to their religion of that day. Those priests and rabbis standing around. They said, make them hold their peace. We won't be able to hear what the doctors go to say or what the reverend. Make them hold their peace. Jesus I can see him as he turned. Said if they hold their peace, the rocks will immediately cry out. Amen. Something had to happen. Say, could the rocks cry out? The very God that created them was riding in on them. Why couldn't they make them hold their peace? They couldn't hold their peace. That's the way today. When the congregation is gathered together. That foreshadow of His appearing. The Holy Spirit begins to breathe upon them. They see those signs and wonders performed of the Holy Spirit. They can't hold their peace. Amen. Something's going to cry out. And the church world said, who is this? What's this all about? Are you one of them? What caused all of this? They don't get it. And they don't get it today. They didn't get it then. They never will get it. Amen. The anointing of the Holy Spirit has brought that to the church world. It's brought, see, there's a three classes. The unbeliever, the make-believer, and the real believer. Amen. And many times, make-believers come in amongst real believers. And they cry, yeah, who is it? Who is this that will come into a congregation that will anoint it till one will speak with tongues and another give the interpretation and exactly tell a sinner of his sins and where he's at? Who is this that stands in an illiterate woman that can't read her name and will stand under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and speak words that she never heard? Amen. And a Mexican raised up in the church and say... I understood every word of it. Amen. And even call me by the name and call me to repent. Right. God have mercy on my soul. Amen. Who is this? Who is it can get in a literate farmer and can stand there the inspiration and tell a man who he is and where he come from and what happened to him and what he must do. What will be his outcome? The world cries out, who is this? What is this? Where did it come from? 
It's the Holy Spirit come from God. For what purpose? To prepare people. Give them a heavenly atmosphere. A desire to come up higher. Now, it isn't so much of what other people think that. The thing we're thinking about this morning is who do you think it is? It's up to you and I. Is it just the fellowship of a denomination called Pentecostal? Church of God, Pilgrim Hall, or Nazarene, or something like that? Church of God, Assemblies of God, United Pentecostal Church. Is that what it is? If that's it, you're miserable. Amen. That's it. Your religion is just a religion. It has no salvation in it. But if you examined it and found it in your soul to be Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Amen. then blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hosanna in the highest Amen. to him that cometh in the Holy Ghost because it is Jesus Christ's own spirit in his church. Amen. Making you sons and daughters of his. Giving you his nature. For you will live with the Father also in the eternal times to come. Who is it? What's this all about? And the coming of the Holy Spirit has always brought such. In the days of Noah, when the Holy Spirit come upon Noah, and he began to prophesy, and begin to say that there's coming a time that the world will be destroyed with water. Look how contrary it was to their belief. There was mockers and scoffers, said the Bible. Making fun, they were eating, drinking, and making merry. Laughed in the face of that prophet. And wondered who was it. They soon found out who it was. Every time the Holy Spirit comes, it brings a division amongst the people. It brings a time that man must stand and make a decision. It's come to you, it's come to me. We've got to make our decisions. It come in the days of Noah. It also come in the time of Moses. When God anointed his servant with the Holy Spirit. Sent him down into Egypt. Some said, who is this superman? Amen. Who is this guy that would make himself a ruler over us? Amen. Moses didn't desire to be a ruler. He is bringing the people the truth. What does he do? Break up our religions. That's what they said about Jesus. He condemns our religions because that's all they had. Same was in the days of Noah or Moses. Moses came down and he tore up their traditions and brought them to a living faith in a living God and led them from victory to victory with signs and wonders. It stumped the unbelievers. Who is this? Who is that man? Where is he born at? We thought he was an Egyptian. Here all at once he must be some illegitimate child somewhere. Who is he that comes in this name? It's always been that way. In the days of Jesus, they said, who is he? He has no education. We have no school, no record of his schooling. We have no denomination that he belongs to. Who is he? Only thing we ever know, there's some crazy man out here, a wild man, by the name of John the Baptist, hair sticking out all over his face and half naked. With a piece of sheepskin wrapped around him, declared his coming, him, and he was born to illegitimate birth. His mother was to be mother with him before Joseph ever married his mother. Who is that? The only record they had of him. Amen. 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 That's all they know about the church today. Some bunch of post hole diggers or something. No record at all. Amen. The record is not kept on earthly books. It's divinely protected in heaven. Who is this? This is a drunkard. This was so and so. That. That's right. But now he's a son of God. Amen. He's been transformed. Who is he? Who is this that comes in the name of the Lord? When the Holy Ghost comes today, it brings the same decisions. Each one of us are responsible for our decision. We must make it. It's here by us. It's here with us. There's no way around it anymore. There's nothing we can do about it. 
We have to reject it or receive it. Amen. The same life that was in Christ Jesus is in the church today. It's performing the same works. It's doing the same miracles. It's doing everything that He did. It's healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, casting out devils, preaching the gospel. The poor is receiving it. Amen. Blessed is he who is not offended. Amen. Go show John, he said, these things that are done. John in the prison, his eagle eyed filmed over. His prophetic eye couldn't see like it once seen. But then it could see when he said the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear. And blessed is he who is not offended in, in what I do. If I do not the works of my Father, then believe me not. And if I do the works of my Father, if you can't believe me, believe the works. Now that was his message. That's what he said that it must be done. That's what we've got to do, is to make a decision. What will we do with it? It's here. Who is it? What is it? It's a promise of God by his word that he would do it. God promised he would do it. And we see it being done. Now, it's up to us to make a decision. Will we serve? Will we understand? You say, how will I be able, brother, to understand things that I know nothing about? Jesus said to Nicodemus, except the man be born again, he cannot see or understand the kingdom of heaven. Said the wind blows where it lists. Listen, then thou cannot tell from whence it come or whether it goes. Amen. Which way it come from or where it's going or where it's been. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. You don't know where it comes from, where it's been or where it's going. But you know one thing, where it's going to take you. Amen. Wherever it come from, it'll take you back with it. So today, it behooves us. To know what we are doing. Understand it. Now if it doesn't bear record of the word. Then it isn't God's spirit. If it doesn't heal the sick. Denies it. Then it's not God's spirit. God is a healer. Amen. One just once said. Why did God ever let sin come on the earth? God was one unit at one time. In that unit was Attributes. And he was a savior. By nature, he was a savior. If there had never been a sinner, how would he ever been a savior? He couldn't save until he permitted sin. God's a healer. And he cannot heal unless there be somebody sick to heal. See, if there had never been a sickness, there had never been a healer. God being a healer, his own attributes projected these things. There had to be something to respond to that attribute that was in God. God, the word God means an object of worship. God wanted to be worshipped. So he had to project something that would worship him. Amen. Jesus said to the woman at the well, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So when the spirit of God is near, what will take place? Salvation will be introduced. Amen. Salvation that will bring a spiritual worship. Amen. Not a singing of hymns altogether, but a worship in the Spirit. It's got to be so contrary to the intellect. It's stunned by it. You can't understand God by intellectual faith. You must be born again. It's got to come to the heart. It's got to be an experience. And when the experience is wrought by the Holy Spirit, then the same nature and the same power and the same reaction that happened on the church first will come again. Amen. For it's God in them. Amen. Jesus said, a little while in the world won't see me no more, yet ye shall see me. For I, I as a personal pronoun, I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Then the works that I do shall you also. Then when those works are produced in a church, it stirs the people, the outside people like it did there at the feast. Who is this? What's the matter with those people? 
When those Galileans saw him coming on that little mule, they screamed and they shouted and they, they carried on like a, a bunch of drunken people. Amen. Those priests that make them hold their peace. He said, if they hold their peace, the rocks will cry the same way. You see? On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came into the people, they acted like they were drunk. Even so much as they scoffed and made fun of it. He said, these men are full of new wine. Peter said, ye men of Jerusalem and you that dwell in Judea, let this known unto you and hearken unto my words, for these are not drunken as you suppose. But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. It'll come to pass in the last day, saith God, I'll pour my spirit out upon all flesh. When that same spirit is poured out upon a congregation of people, the same results will take place. Amen. Or you cannot put a life of a grapevine in a pumpkin and make it bear pumpkins. Amen. It'll bear grapes. Amen. By their fruits they are known. The church is known. The world's wondering, who is it? What is this that's going on? They don't understand because they don't know God. Amen. Now when we see this coming to pass exactly like God said, we're waiting now. What is it? The Holy Spirit is introducing Christ. Some glorious day, not across a hillside, riding on a mule, but coming out of glory, will come the Son of God. Amen. Wrapped in the righteousness of God's Spirit. Riding on a white horse with his vesture dipped in blood called King of King and Lord of Lords. The Word of God he will be. And following him through the skies will be ten thousands times ten thousands of thousands. The armies of heaven will come with him. What a glorious time that will be. Singing. There will be singing. There will be shouting. There will be sorrow. There will be crying. There will be weeping. There will be wailing. You'll be represented in one of those groups, Frank. So make your decision this morning what group you'll be with while we bow our heads just a moment. Wondering at this time if there is any here who has not made their decision yet for Jesus Christ. Yet you've been in the meetings and watched Him give sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, the lame, walking, Seen him take the very thoughts out of the minds of the people and say, you're so-and-so. Why did you do this and do that? Exactly what he said he would do. And yet you haven't yet become his servant. You've never got a witness. No man can call Jesus the Christ only by the Holy Spirit. You say, I believe it because the Word says so. That's true. But the Word says that no man can say Jesus is Christ until you have received the Holy Ghost. No man can call Jesus the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. Have you not received this yet? And you'd like to, would you want to be remembered in prayer by raising up your hands and pray for me? I now confess to God that I want His Holy Spirit in my life to guide me that I fully understand all His program that He has for me in life that I might walk with Him as His servant. Would you raise your hand just before we pray? Lord bless you, sonny. Lord bless you, sister. God be with you. Let us pray. Most gracious God, as we have read in thy word where that when you entered into the city of Jerusalem where your people were gathered, there were those there who were expecting you. There was charge with your coming. You had promised you'd be at the feast. You'd meet him there. And they were looking for you. Others thought it was nonsense. Who was this anyhow? Just a Galilean make-believe prophet. A man that had been declared crazy by the council of churches. Well, they said, we know that you're mad. You got a devil. And a big declared an insane person. And his congregation was declared insane. And the man that introduced him, John the Baptist, was declared a wild, crazy man out of the wilderness. A hermit. Why, it was nothing. The ritzy congregations of that day didn't believe such a message. And those spirits that held them in bondage are holding millions today. 
still they don't believe it. But to those who were waiting, they knew their Lord had promised to come to the feast. And they were waiting, gathering themselves on the street and in the little rooms and anywhere they could, talking and waiting in the whole atmosphere was charged with His coming. So is it today, Lord. You promised we'd be taken to the marriage feast of the Lamb. You'd come get the church. And we see signs appearing that You're coming. So the whole atmosphere is charged with Your coming. We're waiting. There were some hands went up this morning, Lord, that they wasn't yet sure that they'd be called into that feast. We're watching for You to come. They tell us they've got bombs that can blow the whole world to pieces in one moment. They can look at a star over in Russia and time it exactly to Louisville, Kentucky in a split minute. Hit the moon and predicted it on 80 seconds. Oh, Lord, we see those things appearing just as you said they would be. And they are well able to carry out their threats. God, we turn the page and look at you're able to carry out your promise for your God and we're waiting for you to come. Take these people into thy care today, Lord. Grant unto them eternal life through Jesus our Lord. Grant those that are sick and afflicted may be healed. Give us a great service tonight in the healing service coming up. Bless all together in every church that's represented here, the different peoples of different phases of faith. May they realize that it isn't the faith of the church that they go to that makes them what they are. It's their undulterated faith that they have in the Son of God. All praise shall be thine, Father. We commit them to thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus paid it all. That's what he did. Oh, my sin, him I know. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as Now the message over. Let's just worship the Lord and sing Him. Jesus paid it all. Oh. Let's not look at one another. Let's look up. Raise our hand. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus, the Spirit Right.
precious name. Now I want you to turn and just shake hands with somebody in front of you, back of you, right and left side while we sing this. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Oh, plunge him today. Now let's raise your hands. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Oh, glory to His name. Oh, there to my heart was a blood. Doesn't make you feel wonderful. All scoured out now waiting. Oh, how wonderful. Come to this fountain. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Oh, plunge in. Precious name. Glory to the name. There to my heart was the blood Glory to the name. Doesn't that do something to you? Think of this. I I'm so wondrously safe from sin. Jesus so sweetly abide. abide. You abide me and my word in you. There at the cross, there he took me. Glory to him. I always put your mind on him as you worship him. What could we do, Lord, without you? Glory. This is the hour of your appearing. You're soon coming, Lord. There my heart was Glory to Oh, my. There's something about that just goes through me till every fiber of my body just shakes. That's the Holy Spirit here. Mm. I say unto thee today, my servant, yea, even as thou hast stood in the midst of this, my people, that I have ordained this day unto thee, says the Lord. For I have anointed thee, yea, thou art my prophet, and I shall be with thee today. Where thou layest hands upon this, my people, who are sick and afflicted in body, I say unto thee, my people, have faith in me, the living God. For I shall bring to pass those things that I have promised. For I am able to bring to pass my word. Therefore I say unto you this day, fear thou not to believe in me, the living God. For I shall be in thy midst in a great and mighty way. Amen. Thanks be to God. 
That's what I was speaking of. My faith looks up to thee, thou am of Calvary, Savior divine, now hear me while I pray. I sing that for a purpose. The Lord has given me a text for tonight through that interpretation. <laughs> My word. While life's dark maze I tread and griefs around me spread be thou my God, be darkness turn to day, wipe sorrow, fears away, nor let me ever stray from thee. Two years ago in the catacombs in San Angelo, catacombs in Rome, I was standing down there and I looked down there and I seen where they carved the picture of those saints 2,000 years ago of Jesus. One of them packing the lost sheep on his back, the other in healing the sick and afflicted. I stood there with my hands up like this. I was saying, while life's dark maze I tread and griefs around me spread. Then I went out from there over to the Colosseum and stood on the grounds there where they fed the saints to the lions and the gladiators killed them. I thought, oh God, faith of our fathers living still burning in my heart, Amen. Lord, never let it move from there, nor let me ever stray from thee aside. That's right. How I love him. There is a fountain filled with Drawn from Emmanuel's veins And sinners blind Beneath that blood Aren't you happy you did that? Amen. What if we just shut our eyes and say, The dying feet rejoice to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though bow as he washed off.
feel good. Amen. Just the worship of the Holy Spirit. The blessings of the Lord upon you. Now, we expect to see you tonight. And the prayer card's given out now at 6.30 sharp, so you won't interfere with the rest of the service. And you desire come. And uh, how many is going to heaven by the grace of God? Let's see your hand. We're going up. I've got a father over yonder. I've got a father over yonder. I've got a father over yonder. On the other shore, oh, some bright day I'll go and see him. Some bright day I'll go and see him. Some bright day I'll go and see him. On the other shore, oh, that bright day may be tomorrow. That bright day may be tomorrow. That bright day may be tomorrow. On the other shore, oh, won't that be a happy meeting? Won't that be a happy meeting? Won't that be a happy meeting? On the other shore, you like them old hymns? Amen. Oh, I, you can have all your little chopped up shotties that you want. Give me them old heartfelt blood songs that does something down in here. Wrote by the Holy Spirit, Amen. pinned out by God. They're real. Well, the Lord bless you real good. Hope to see you tonight. Turn the service to the pastor now. Parmel. There may be some here that can't come to the healing service. Not just wants to be anointed and prayed for. There's a whole bunch of us ministers here. Be glad to minister to you in any way that we could. Now, the regular healing service will be tonight. Uh, that is, if you can stay and wait. If you can't, come right here now. There's a lady has got to go in the back. It's got a heart case or something. I believe mean, she's up here. Uh, somebody pointed her finger up here. The lady here has got heart trouble. But can't come back tonight. It's real serious. And wants and can't come into line. I see the reason we ask for the line. In there, we can, myself, everyone has a different way of praying. Some praise in one way, some another. Mine, if I know what I'm talking about, then I can act. But if I went out here to... Say I was going to fix an automobile and I don't know one thing about it. I'd get me a wrench and look around. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> See? Well, now, many people just has that predominating faith that goes right out there and challenges those things and casts them away. To me, I have to see what God's plan is for that first. You, see. you have to watch a prophetic gift is a strange thing. You can do things with it to get yourself in trouble. How many knows that? Look at Elijah, I believe it was, yes, Elijah. He was a young fellow, went bald-headed, and some little children was teasing him about being bald-headed. So why don't you go up like Elijah did? And he turned around and put a curse on those children, and 42 of them was killed. That ain't the nature of the Holy Spirit. See? That, that prophet angered to just put a curse in what he said. Jesus said, on down, in the Scriptures that I read this morning, if you say to this mountain, be moved, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you said will come to pass. You can have what you said. There you are. So you had to watch what you're doing. Now, look at Moses. He had power. It wasn't God's will to bring water out of the rock. I may know that the second time. You're supposed to speak to it, not smite it. God told him to speak to it. He turned around and smote it because he had the power to do it. God took him up on the mountain and said, look over yonder. See the land, but I'll not let you go over. Because what you've done down there at the rock. See so he had to watch and do it. Now, that's the reason I'm always trying. And I feel like that soon, maybe within the next few days, I have a feeling that God's going to speak to me again. See? I'm laying in the woods day and night, waiting for that time. I've been feeling for the last two or three weeks that he was going to speak to me. I believe I'm going to have something change. I've looked forward for it for a long time. The one, the prediction that was given here not long ago of what would take place, it did. But it just seems like down in me there's something moving. And I just stay out, go early in the morning, out at night, waiting, watching to see what he'll say. And every once in a while I'll get down on my knees and say, Are you here, Lord? Is there anything that you want your servant to know? That's the reason I'm watching. I want the hour to come where we won't have to have discernment. 
where I have faith without it. Now think a vision comes here. Say, this woman or this lady or whoever it is, the, I don't know, man, whoever you might be, but come up here. I never seen you in my life. And yet he shows me there who you are. What's the matter with you? Where you come from? What you did to cause this? There has to be a cause for everything. And what if somebody sinned? Maybe they did do something you ought not to have done. Maybe they ought to have done something they did not do. Or something on that manner. And here they are with the God permitting Satan to hold that curse on them. To bring them to something, to, to obedience. Sickness is sometimes is a whip God uses to bring obedience. And what that person stand there, I say, Oh, hallelujah, glory to God, praise God, and norm with all, pray over him. And I happen to cast that evil spirit off of him. And God permitted it to be put on there. I'm in trouble right then with God. You know what I mean? I mean, but when I see there that the Lord says a certain, certain thing, maybe Satan just did it. And I see there's nothing in that person's life to enter. Then I have faith to walk up there. I have faith because I've seen him when he come to me and told me to do it. And then I, another thing is, maybe if they've done something wrong, and I say, you did a certain, certain thing. That's right. Well, make that right. I promise before God I'll make it right. Look back again and see him well out in years to come. Still well. Then you know God's already spoken. it. Just waiting for you to say the word. That's all. That's what they, That's why I watch, make my ministry slow, take each case and watch it. Then I know what I'm talking about. See, I know exactly what to say to the person. Now, there has been times I've seen death over a person. I wouldn't say nothing. I just say, the Lord bless you. Have faith in God. God will heal you. You just have faith. Go on like that. Knowing in my heart that they're not going to live because, well, you just don't want to tell them that. Unless, unless you have to. If the Holy Spirit reveals it, you know it's been done many times. Some say, might as well make ready. You're going. There ain't nothing going to save you. I had a little girl here some time ago. The father said, if he healed that little girl, he'd be a Christian. I wanted that family to be a Christian. I went out of the house. The little child had double pneumonia. They'd give her all the penicillin that they could give her. Didn't take any effect. She's got lower and lower and lower. And I went out to see her. I went in there and I said, I don't know. I said, I, I'm going to pray. And I went in and prayed for her. And with all my heart. And the doctor come that afternoon and said her fever's dropped. Next morning he come. Said that child's so much better. Said she can get up by the night. Oh, the father and I went to see her, met me, and he was rejoicing. He said, oh, uh, Brother Branham. And I said, Lee, I'm so glad to see your baby like that. And the Holy Spirit appeared to me, said, she's not going to live but three days. And the father was going to come to Christ. He said, now, when you have your meeting, I'm ready to be baptized, him and his family. And I, I couldn't tell him. I hated to tell him. I knew the baby was going to die. I went back and told my wife, told all, a lot of the friends and my neighbors and things, the baby ain't going to live. Little girl about eight years old. I said, she ain't going to live. She'll be dead within three days. I seen that mother stand there crying, bowed her head three times, the tears run down. I see a little white casket pass through the room. She wanted to stand there. I said, she's going to go. I said, you ought to go tell Lee. And I said, I don't want to tell him. I said, I love little Beatrice first and I, you all know who I'm talking about. So I said, I love little Beatrice and I, I don't want her to know it, and I don't want to tell the father. And, and I said, I, I don't know what to do, but I know the baby. In three days, she was gone. See? I said, I didn't want to tell the father. And now, that way, now lots of times I went and prayed in Africa there where there was only about three or four people on the platform. And when something take place on the platform, I just made a congregational prayer. And 25,000 miracles taking place at once. It's the people's faith. Now, a lot of times we bring the people right up to the platform, lay hands on them, pray for them, send them out. They go out and get well. See? So it's just what are the people think. It's their faith anyhow. But to curse a thing, I want to know first what I'm doing. That's me doing it then. If you come have hands laid on, that's your faith. That's what you believe. You understand what I mean now, everybody? See? And I'm afraid to say, here comes a person I don't know anything about. I've never seen him before. Brother Bram, I got so and so with me. It's, uh, I, I got cancer. I got tuberculosis. I'm just afraid to say that. See, I don't know what I'm doing. See, I, I just rather say, I pray for you. See, like that. But when I can see a vision and see what's going to take place, that's different. See, I, I know what to do. Uh, I understand now. What it's just like walking in anything. But a lot, a lot of times I pray for the people. Hundreds of times. Brother Shire sitting right back there. I'm looking at him now. 
I've been somewhere to a funeral service, buried Sister Roberson's mother. Brother Shire, I've never seen a man in any more condition just than he was in. Uh, t- migraine headaches or something. I don't know. And he got to a place that was unconscious like, didn't know nothing. Walked around his room, just had a word of prayer and walked back out. I said, just as certain as I'm standing here, you'll he- be healed. And that was it. Walked right out. Miss Woods there, her mother, laying dying with a cancer on her face. So, you know what it is? You even touch your lip here. And here, you can die in a little bit. A bee stung a man down here below New Albany recently. Stung him on the lip. He died in about two minutes. Anything right here, don't ever squeeze nothing on your lips because it runs to the nerve, it runs to your brain. Really, people, a man should never shave over their lips. That's exactly right. When your razor pulls, tears comes in your eyes. It's bad right in there because the main nerve. Here, some time ago, I was over here where Gene, Leo, there's a girl there that worked at the apothecary down, uh, down here at the apothecary. And I went in there to get some kind of something other for my kids to get vitamins and stuff for their colds and so forth. And she was telling it out there in the neighborhood, there's a certain minister there. He said, do you mean to tell me that Brother Bram would give one of his children medicine? And it's not knowing. And I said, well, I said, I ain't got a bit more faith in him, nothing in the world. And just two days after that, his shaving cut his lip, squeezed it like that. He was in the hospital the next day under an oxygen tent. And about four or five days later, come out of his face swell like that. Thing. Come out like that because he squeezed the place on his lip. See? You have to be careful what you do about that, that lip trouble in here. Now, back to the spirit, the spiritual side. See, you have to know what you're approaching, what you're doing. If you don't know, don't do it. Now, in prayer for the sick, oh, I could say many, many things. Miss Woods, that I was speaking of, her uh, mother, a cancer done hit down into these veins. Her, her face is swelled out. Leo, Jean, and I was in Michigan. And we heard it on the phone. My wife called me and said, Miss Woods' mother's a dying. I walked across the river. There sat Miss Woods all tore up. She said, her mother dying. I went into the room and stayed there with her a long time. No vision. But just as I walked to her, just something inside of me said, she's going to live. I walked back out. Mr. and Miss Woods sat there and said, well, what did the Lord say? Did you see a vision? I said, no. They, right quick. They'd been in a meeting, see, and seen the visions. They got downcast. But just in a minute, I said, but something told me. It's, it's as much thus saith the Lord as a vision that the woman's going to live. And she did. A cancer over here, down at her face like that. And here, done went into the bone, eat all the bone out and things around like that, all the meat down into the bone like that. And she's living today, not just hardly a scar there where it was at. See, and what scattered the doctor gave her a shot in it and just scattered it on out, you see. And that, that did her try to burn it off or something they tried to do to it. Now, it's a people's faith. What you got faith in? If thou, here, Jeremiah said, come lay your hands on my girl, my daughter, and she'll live. You remember that? The Roman said, I'm not worthy. You come under my roof. Just speak the word, my servant lives. Is that right? There your heart depends on the faith. Now, is a lady here that's got the heart trouble that couldn't come back tonight. If she's here, on the left. All right, sir. All right, young lady. If you want to come right up this way now, you just come right ahead. Anybody else? You're welcome. I want Brother Cash and Brother, your brother here. I believe Brother Beeler's in the midst too, isn't he? Come here, Brother Beeler. Another preacher? Any of the ministers that we come now, we want to pray for this young woman. They said it was heart trouble. Is that right? That's the greatest killer we have. Heart trouble. But do you know Jesus lives in the heart? Have you accepted him in there? He, or you live here in the city, do you? Oh, hi. You can be healed of your heart trouble. God is a healer. He heals the heart. He heals every member of the body, every organ. Now, come over this way, brother, and let's come where they are. I want the congregation to bow their heads, brother. Now this make the heart. You make it to grow and to live. You can build a new wall. Where the old has been torn down. Where thou art 
God and God alone. Now I think, what if this was my sister, Dolores, my wife, Nina, or my girl, Rebecca? I want the church to pray with all that it is. Yes, a prayer of faith for my child, for my wife, or loved one. Perhaps it's somebody's daughter, and maybe somebody's wife, and maybe some baby's mother. She says she loves you, and she's accepted you as her Savior. And she has a right to come to these privileges. Yes. And we come upon the authority of your invitation. Yes, Lord. To minister to her these gifts of healing. And by laying hands upon her, may the <coughs> Word of God be made manifest in her body yes. to take away this heart, God. We can do it upon the basis of Jesus Christ's own word saying that the prayer of faith shall save the sick yes. and God shall raise them up. Yes. Now in Jesus Christ's name let the heart trouble leave our sister. May she go with never one time a speck of it no more. Oh, and you shall have praise and glory for these blessings which can only come by your name. As we minister according to your word. Amen. Amen. Dear God, these people wrinkle hands of this dear mother as ministered to her children and to her grandchildren. I had ministered to me a many times. And she needs you this morning. Yes. And we are standing as you're preaching that you're such a great God, such a great, powerful God, and not a God of history, a God of present tense. So I am. am. And I pray, O oh Lord God, that you send your Letting the healing yes. upon her body, yes. hands upon her in the name of Jesus. May she leave here today and get wet. Right. And live many happy years yet to serve. And you shall have all the praise for these things that, as she walks about and tells people of what has happened. Amen. 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 I prayed for her several years ago with tuberculosis. She was healed. She's sick, but she has to have discernment to know just exactly what's, what she's done or what more about it. Which I do believe, oh, this uh, young lady that we prayed for a while ago is going to be well. I believe that with all that's in me. I just believe it. You believe it too? I have the same kind of feeling about them that I had about your mother, Miss Wood, see? Or like I did you, Brother Shower, and many others here. I just feel they're going to be well. That's all. They, they have, they have drove a long ways and come to the service and that shows their faith. You know, the Bible speaks of that in the last days. That's right. Oh, it'll be light in the evening time. Is that right? It'll be light. The same gospel, the same Holy Spirit, the same power of God would be here to heal the sick and the afflicted. As it was. And God is present right now. Present right now. He's just as present now as He will be tonight. It's the same to heal the sick and the afflicted. Isn't He good? Uh, let's sing a chorus. This wonderful Jesus is to me. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God is He. Let's sing it now together. Oh, wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. God is He. Oh, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer. Praise His name. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Jesus is to me, Counselor, 
Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. Oh, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful, my Redeemer, free His name. I once was lost, now I'm found free from condemnation. Jesus gives liberty and a full salvation, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Oh, wonderful is my reading. Praise His name. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Sing it, everyone. Now, lift it up. Prince of peace. Mighty God is here. Oh, saving me. Keeping me from all sin and change. Wonderful is my reading. Pray His name. Wonderful, oh wonderful. Raise up your hands when you speak. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. Oh, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my reading. Praise His name. Amen. Let's just raise up our hands now and thank Him, everyone, in your own way. Lord, we thank You for Your goodness. We thank You for Your mercy, for all that You have done for us. It's been good to be here. We would say with Peter and him, let us build three tabernacles, one for Thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. But that blessed boy says, this is my beloved Son, hear ye Him. So wonderful is Jesus, the Counselor, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Be with us through the coming day, Lord. Bless us now. Give us a great service tonight. Bless your servants everywhere across the world. Bless the meetings that's coming up across the nation, Lord. Out in the San Jose, California, other places where the meetings and people are gathering now for the great services. Be with us tonight. Be at the folks at the tabernacle all across the nation, everywhere it's called your name. Grant, Lord, that you'll be there. In Jesus' name, I'll turn the service to the pastor, which will be 6.30 now. I would like to say that we want to take up a love offering for our brother today. Thank you, my brother Junior. But <laughs> thank you. Not at all. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't do that. I feel real little. I feel real good now. You don't want me to feel any different, do you? So, thank you just the same. He was just joking. See what I'd say. 